Good morning, welcome to this video where we'll be looking at the surface anatomy of the lower limb by drawing it out. The first thing I'd like to do is find the bony landmarks of the anterior aspect of the skeleton. First one we want to find is the anterior superior iliac spine. I'm going to be drawing these on the skeleton over here for the aphis. That's going to be just here. Our pubic tubercle, that would be just lateral to the pubic symphysis that connects the two pelvic bones. Just on the anterior aspect of the pubis there. The greater trochanter. Well, our trochanters are these two bumps at the proximal end of the femur. The lesser trochanter medially and the greater trochanter laterally. The patella is this small triangular sesamoid bone at the front of the joint. We then have our medial and lateral epitondyles. Now, a condyle is this rounded articular surface at the distal end of the femur. The word epi means next to or above. And so these two little bumps that are just next to and above the condyles are the epi condyles. Then we come down to the tibial tuberosity. This will be that little bump you can feel at the anterior and proximal end of the tibia. And that leads into this medial aspect of the tibia. This surface that's only got a little bit of skin covering it, it's very exposed. It's what we feel of our shin bone. Coming down here and terminating distally at the medial malleolus on this side. The fibula comes down laterally and terminates with our lateral malleolus, which is a little bit lower and a little bit longer. And those are our major bony landmarks. For now, we found them on the skeleton. I'd try and find them on yourself, see if you can palpate these structures, and then we're going to apply them to our figure. Now, first off, we need to add the aces. I'm, some, I'm afraid that somewhat uh, frustratingly, it's not actually shown on this picture, but it would have been just here, just off the photo. The pubic tubercle, again, that's covered by, although it's in the photograph, it's covered by subcutaneous structures, the external genitalia, things like that. So although we can't see that structure, we know it's going to be roughly there. Now what we can see is a suggestion of the ligament that runs between these two landmarks. If we add it to this picture here, that ligament is the inguinal ligament, and that divides our abdomen from our thigh. And if we follow that line, that crease here where we have a shadow and a highlight on either side of it, that's our inguinal ligament demarcating the top of the thigh. We come down, we now have the greater trochanter to look for. And in this position, it's not going to be the easiest to see. If a patient, if a person sticks their hip out to one side, that greater trochanter becomes very prominent, very easy to feel, easy to see. When they're in a more neutral position, that greater trochanter is covered in. But we know it's going to be roughly roughly about here where that hand is resting. Coming down to the knee, the patella will be within this tissue here. Let me draw a little triangle for that. The epicondyles, we can see they're just superior and on either side of the patella. So if you add a blue dot here and here, that's roughly where those epicondyles will be. The tibial tuberosity, is that little shadowed area here. We'll just add that in and then we can see the lines that demarcate this medial aspect of the tibia so one line down here that's going to be the posterior aspect of it where the shadow is here that's demarcating the anterior aspect and if you follow those lines down they should come down to form the medial malleolus on the medial side we can then head over laterally and see the lateral malleolus Shift over here. Now, once you've got the bony landmark found on your figure, we can use them to interpret the position of the bones. So if we start off up here with the pelvis, the pelvis can be roughly filling up this space, heading back into here towards the sacrum, uh, sort of forming a rough kind of bowl shape. Don't worry too much about the details, but we know that that head, that ball at the end of the femur, be sat here, roughly halfway along that inguinal ligament. We have a neck that travels back to the greater trochanter. 
and then a shaft that will travel down the thigh towards the knee. The really important thing when you're drawing the bones, when you're thinking about the femur, remember that that femoral shaft doesn't travel straight down like this. It's coming down on an oblique angle. It starts off wide and then moves medially towards the knee. So we have that coming down, it widens out at the knee and forms those condyles for the knee joint, which will be just down here. The tibia, most of that's drawn in. We've got our medial aspect, our medial malleolus at the distal end. We just need to add in that widened tibial plateau that forms the inferior part of the knee joint. Just inferior and lateral to that tibial plateau is the head of the fibula, this rounded area here. And the shaft of the fibula will just travel straight from the head down to the medial malleolus. Not the greatest fibula I've ever drawn, there we go. And that's our bones. So, we've got our bones in place. The next thing we want to draw are the muscles over the top. So to do that, I'm going to make the skeletal landmark of the skeleton a little bit lighter. Push that back so we can see our muscles over the top. I'm going to switch to red. And we're ready now to add in our muscles. Now when we draw the muscles, uh, we want to think about them in exactly the same way we do when we think about them in anatomy, when we think about them medically and clinically. Okay, we want to think of them as compartments first, and then look for the details, the individual muscles within them, later. So the first thing I'd do is just mark out roughly the shape of the thigh and the shape of the leg. For the thigh, we've got the borders coming out here, coming down to that kneecap, the inguinal ligament, Remember that demarcates the beginning of the thigh. Come down to the knee on either side. Just draw around these shapes. Just start thinking about what they might be. But for now we're just roughly tracing around them. Getting the shape of the limb. We should have something that looks like this. Next we need to find our compartment within the leg and within the thigh. If we start off in the thigh, we can see from this anterior view, we should be able to see our medial compartment and our anterior compartment. Chief finding that, chief for drawing that, is what muscle, what structure divides our anterior compartment from the medial compartment? Well, the structure we're looking for is a long muscle that runs from aphis to the medial border of the knee, and that will be sartorius. And you can just see the shadow here, that's the distal end of sartorius coming up to that aphis. So if we add our line along that muscle back to the knee, we now have our medial compartment on the medial aspect and our anterior compartment in front of it. Those compartments, the thigh stops at the level of the knee and we're now in the compartment of the leg. The muscle compartments, the compartments we find in the leg, we have four of them two posterior ones, an anterior compartment and a lateral compartment. And we can actually see all three of them from this anterior view. So here, just behind that medial border of the tibia, everything in this area, that's the posterior compartment. I'm just marking it out so we can see it there. Don't worry about the details of it for now, we'll look at that in the next video. What I'm interested in is this area on the lateral side of the tibia, where we'll find our anterior compartment and our lateral compartment. The anterior compartment attaches to the lateral aspect of the tibia and comes down along here towards the foot, over the top of the ankle, and send its tendons into the foot and ankle. The lateral compartment, this attaches to the fibula, and remember that fibula is not a weight-bearing bone. All it does is provide attachment for these muscles. Come down on that lateral side and down. Okay, now we've got our major compartment. We're ready to draw the muscle, the individual muscles within them. So if we start off with the anterior compartment, we already know where sartorius is. It's going to follow that line. And if you want, you can just fill that line out a bit more to suggest that muscle. The rest of the compartment, 
will be made by the quadriceps muscles, those four muscles that all come down distally to attach to our kneecap. So if we draw those in, I'd redraw the kneecap. We know that they all have to converge on that. And then I'd have a look at these lumps that we can see here and here. These will be the lateral and medial muscles. This is lump down in here, at the distal end of vastus medialis. And this lump here is vastus lateralis. And it's important to remember vastus medialis comes down a little bit lower. It has those horizontal fibres that help pull the kneecap towards the medial aspect and stop it rubbing against the knee. In between the two vastus medialis and lateralis muscles, we have vastus intermedius. However, when we look at a patient, we can't see that muscle because it's covered by the fourth quadriceps muscle, rectus femoris. And rectus femoris will travel in between these muscles, along here, starting off just below sartorius, coming down between the muscles, heading in a straight line towards that patella, and its muscle belly is a little bit higher, I'll sit up here, and a long tendon coming down. All these muscles travel into the kneecap uh, via the quadriceps tendon, and then the patella attaches to the tibial tuberosity via the patella ligament. We then head up to the medial compartment. We have sartorius of its anterior border, its medial and posterior border, will be demarcated by gracilis, this long muscle that runs down the medial aspect of the thigh and shares an attachment at the knee with sartorius. We then have our adductor muscles that pass from the pelvis medially to the femur laterally. So if we draw the first of these up here, okay, we do want lines travelling in this direction. This will be adductor longus, the longest of the adductor muscles. Superior to that, we have adductor brevis. There's going to be a slightly shorter adductor. And then inferior, and filling up most of this space, we have adductor magnus. We also have pectineus coming across, and that will give us all of our muscles in the medial compartment. So if we come down to the leg, we have our three muscles in the anterior compartment of the leg, and two muscles in the lateral compartment. Now, it's kind of hard to see the lateral compartment from here, so um, for simplicity's sake, I'll just say we're just going to leave that, we're not going to add any details, just know that we have these two muscles, our fibularis longus and brevis, running down here and round to the lateral side of the ankle. The anterior compartment, we have lutus to the big toe, extensor digitorum to the toes, and tibialis anterior. All three of those muscles run pretty close together, and then when they go into the ankle, their tendons spread out. The ankle joint that will run underneath this tendinous band that holds them in place, that's our extensor retinaculum. And then we see tibialis anterior travel to the medial aspect of the ankle, extensor halutus travel to the big toe, and extensor digitorum, that muscle splits into four tendons, that travel to each of the digits. And so with that, we've finished our drawing of the lower limb. We've got all of our major muscles drawn out. In the next video, we'll be looking at the posterior aspect of the limb. So I'll see you there in a bit.